In this video, we'll talk about finding closed formulas for sequences. This is probably the, the trickiest thing in this section in general, because this is actually something that's very hard to do. Um, knowing a, a recursive pattern for a sequence does not necessarily mean that there's going to be an easy closed formula for it. So rather than treat this as a general approach to how to find closed formulas in general, we're going to look at a few particular kinds of sequences. And you'll see that in the book, this this, this uh, disc discussion will count for most of the types that you'll see there. Um, the first exercise in the book have you uh, just try to find the next number in a sequence, which means you just have to see the pattern in any way at all. Uh, so for example, in this first problem, we can see that the pattern here, if you look at the differences between successive uh, entries, we're adding eight every time to get the next entry, which means the next item should be <clears throat> 49. Um, in the second example, the amount that's being added is uh, 3, and then 5, and then 7, and then 9. And so you see that we have a pattern in these differences where we're getting the odd numbers as the differences between terms. But um, you may have noticed that these were actually just the perfect squares. There's 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, uh, four squared, five squared, six squared, which means it stands to reason that the next one would be seven squared. And if you follow this other pattern where you're adding 13, that would also land you in the same place. Um, the last sequence, the differences between the terms get bigger and bigger and bigger as they go. Um, but if you sort of shift your thinking about uh, the relationship between terms, you'll see that what's really happening here is there's a multiplicative relationship where instead of adding to get to the next term, I'm multiplying. So if I were to start with two and I double it, then double that and double that and so on, uh, I would get this sequence. So twice 64 is 128 would be the next term there. <clears throat> um, in these two examples, the last two, um, we're seeing a pattern between the, the successive terms, but we're also seeing a formula. So the formula a sub n equals n squared for example, describes the second sequence. The formula a n is 2 raised to the nth power um, describes the second sequence. These are, these are not just, it's not just doubling every time. They actually are exactly the powers of 2. We have 2 to the first, 2 squared, 2 cubed, and so on. Um, and so that's good to know um, that that's what we'll get. But notice there are some cases where we have, where we can see the pattern between successive terms and also we see the closed formula. And that's really going to be the basis of the strategy that we'll form for this particular section. Our goal here is, as often as possible, to be able to come up with these closed formulas um, from, uh, from the patterns that we're seeing. So we didn't quite do it here. We'll come back to this example, um, the first one. But, um, but let's talk first about the, the strategy that will take us through most of the problems in this section. Um, our strategy is going to be focusing on looking at the growth between the terms and not worrying about the actual numbers as our first uh, as, as the first step in our analysis. The second part is um, we want to sort of categorize in our mind the different kinds of growth rates that we see. So in the uh, previous example, we saw an example where the terms were differing by a constant. We saw an example where the terms were differing by increasing odd numbers, and we saw an example where the terms were doubling every time. So we should keep that kind of those growth rates in mind, and when we see those growth rates again, we'll know that the sequence that has those growth rates were related to the ones that we've just seen. Um, the two uh, most common types are, um, are called arithmetic progressions and geometric progressions. An arithmetic progression is like the first example we saw, where every term is just a fixed number plus, I mean, a fixed number added on to the previous term. So in the example we saw, we added eight onto each term to get the next term. <clears throat> um, the term arithmetic progression is one that uh, you see in like K to 12 uh, curriculum. Um, so if you are studying to be a, a teacher at the secondary level or elementary school level, um, you may see arithmetic progression come up in curriculum materials. But all it means is a sequence where each term is a fixed number added on to the previous term. Uh, the example of this is just multiples of that number. So if our if our pattern is add eight each time, 
then um, a sequence that has that pattern will be the sequence of multiples of eights. The other one I mentioned was a geometric progression. And again, that's a, a term you'll see in the K-12 curriculum. Um, as you get into continuous math and calculus and those kinds of things, you'll, you'll see that replaced with um, the term exponential function. But a geometric progression <clears throat> is sort of the discrete version of an exponential function as it comes up in, um, in the lower grades. Uh, in that kind of sequence, each term is uh, equal to a constant ratio r times the previous term. So our, uh, the pattern is multiplicative with a fixed number each time rather than additive. We saw that in the first examples with the sequence that um, doubled every time. Um, the sequence that has that kind of growth is just the uh, powers of r. So we saw powers of 2 had the doubling um, growth. If we had tripling growth, then powers of 3 would have that, and, and so on. So what that means is in a couple of different types, if we see these types of growth, we know that a se the sequence that we're looking at has these types of um, closed formulas. And so that's the basis of our strategy. The sequence that we saw that was 1, 4, 9, 16 um, is neither of those types. Um, that's the one where we're adding successively higher odd numbers and the closed formula ended up being per the perfect squares, a sub n equals m squared. Um, so we want to put that one in our pocket. And if we see that kind of pattern again, we'll know it has something to do with a sub n equals n squared, but it does not fit either of, it's not an arithmetic progression and it's not a geometric progression. All right, so here's some examples. Uh, the first problem here is exactly the same one that we saw uh, in the first place. Um, we said the pattern here is adding 8 each time. And so I'm going to write underneath it b sub n. And I'm going to write the pattern that um, has the same growth rate, but which has a formula that I know. And that pattern is going to be the multiples of 8. So this... Uh, sequence bn is simply has the formula 8n. So what we what we have is a sequence that has the same growth rate as the one we're interested in, but which has a formula that I know. I know the closed formula for this one. It's just eight times which number you run. So now all I need to do is look for a relationship between the numbers in the top and the numbers on the bottom. So if I look at these pairs, I'm looking for a relationship. And the number on the top, you'll notice, is always 7 less than the number on the bottom. The number on the top, in each of those pairs, the number on the top is always 7 less than the number on the bottom. The number on the bottom had the formula 8n, so the number on the top must have the formula 8n minus 7. So this is my closed formula in this case. It's very easy to check. You can just calculate something like a sub 4 uh, with the closed formula. a sub 4 would be 8 times 4 minus 7, so that's 32 minus 7, which is 25, and there's a sub 4 right there. So it's easy to see that that is correct. Um, this pattern, we can see, is multiplicative. So the growth here is uh, would be described as times 3 for each term. And so, again, I'm going to put a sequence below it that has that same growth rate. As I said, that's the powers of 3 is going to have that same growth rate. So, just simple powers of 3 will have the uh, pattern multiply by 3 each time to get the, the next term. Um, and so, again, I'm going to look for a relationship between these pairs. Now, in this case, you can see they're kind of diverging from each other because uh, when our relationship is multiplicative, the relationship between the terms is multiplicative, it's not that strange for the relationship between these sequences to be multiplicative. So if you think of this as a multiplicative relationship, you'll notice that the terms on the top row are two-thirds of the numbers on the bottom row. Two is obviously two-thirds of three, six is two-thirds of nine, 18 is two-thirds of 27, and so on. So my sequence then 
my formula is a sub n should be two thirds of the three n three to the n sequence. And again, it's easy to check. Uh, you can check a sub five using a calculator, perhaps, and find that a sub five is one sixty two as as it is supposed to be. The um, the final one here. The pattern is neither of the two. We are adding up five, then adding seven, then adding nine, then adding 11. So this is not geometric and it's not arithmetic, uh, but it does look a lot like the one that we saw with the odd numbers because the, uh, the differences between these are increasing odd numbers. So we want to look for a way to compare this sequence to a sequence that's derived from odd numbers. Um, notice that the first difference here was five. In the other example, the first difference was three. So I have to <coughs> um, sort of skip the first term, start off with uh, four, nine, 16, 25, 36. Um, so I have the, I have uh, perfect squares in the B sub n um, row in now those have exactly the same pattern as the top row. I would have to add, if I was doing this additively, I would add five, then add seven, then add 11, and so on. Um, this sequence does not quite have the formula b sub n equals n squared because it doesn't start with one squared. It starts with two squared. So in this case, my b sub n formula will be n plus one squared. So b1 will be two squared, b2 will be three squared, b4 will be four squared, and so on. That fits the pattern that I see in the BN column. And now I can look for the relationship to the top row. It's not too hard to see that when you pair these up, the numbers on the top are four less than their corresponding number on the bottom. And so subtracting four from the formula that I had below will give me the formula for the sequence that we have above. This final slide has some examples for you to try. Um, these all will fit the patterns that we've seen in the previous slides. Uh, two of these are arithmetic progressions. One of them is a geometric progression, and one can be compared to the sequence of perfect squares. So uh, pause the video, see if you can figure out which one's which. Um, in every case, don't forget that once you think you have a formula for a sub n, you could just plug like n equals five into it and see if it actually gives you the fifth term of the sequence like it's supposed to. I'll count to three and then I'll progress the slides so that you can see a slide with the answers on it.